This is my director's commentary for the short film Forgotten. Before I started storyboarding and thinking of ideas for my film, I had to research in the previous examples and short films, and I use the internet for this. Um, one of a key short film I found on the internet was a film called Broken Glass, and um, by watching this, I recorded the uses and conventions that they used, and I realised that the um, director heavily relied on close-ups and also a lack of dialogue on the screen. Another thriller short film I looked at was called The Carrier, and I found this one on YouTube, and by watching this, I also realised that they didn't heavily rely on dialogue, but they relied a lot more on the sound effects and how the music could also build up suspense and tension for the target audience. And so by watching these two similar films, I decided that for my own project, I'd also uh, use a lack of dialogue, which would help the build up the suspense for my audience. Another reason as to why I used a lack of dialogue was that it helped to produce a lot of Enigma codes in the target audience. And this relates to Bart's theory of Enigma codes. This is exactly what I wanted to achieve in my short film, as it's not a simple short film. It is. It has been created for the audience to produce questions, some of which may not even be answered in the end. Other conventions I included were similar to what I did last year for my opening sequence, which was a title sequence at the very beginning of the film. The title sequence included the name of the main film company, the associated film company, uh, an editor. Also included were the cast names on a separate shot. However, they didn't appear with the word star in beforehand because I felt this would make my project less professional. The fonts that I used for them were intentional because they're very easy to read for the audience. They also appear at a very slow pace and fade in and fade out, uh, hinting at what this genre is going to be, that it's not a happy film, it's a thriller. Due to it being a film, I decided to include credits at the end for some extra information for the target audience. This included the screenplay, the music which I created and also the makeup. These were also in a similar font to the title sequence at the very beginning. They also followed a similar pattern, moving at a very slow pace and fading in and fading out into one another again, to link the two together. Another convention I use, which is used widely in many thriller and horror films, was the mise-en-scene and the location that I filmed in. Even though the female protagonist, Amelia, spends the first few minutes in her house, the majority of the short film actually occurs in an open field location surrounded by trees and also a rundown house. These out of the nowhere locations prove to be very popular in thriller films and help the audience to recognise significantly what the genre is. Another reason as to why I use this deserted location was so that the audience could recognise how lonely Amelia, the female protagonist, actually is, and possibly sympathise with her. This would hopefully help the audience to identify how she fits into the community. Obviously, within thriller films, tension is quite a key element to include, and by looking through the films such as Broken Glass and The Carrier online, I realised that they use a lot of shot reverse shots. So when filming my short film, I decided to also use this quick shot reverse shot sequence and also in the editing I created this. And I also made sure that the shots were very short in time and this effectively helps to build up the speed when watching the film and also, and also the audience's tension. I used this shot reverse shot sequence when Amelia is running into the field to run away from the house because she doesn't know where she is and eventually stumbles onto her best friend's body and the shot reverse shot sequence changes from shots of Amelia running and her best friend lying in the field and eventually the pair meet 